So yeah, there's this image. Um, the university used to send stuff out like this, and I have like a collection of these sort of things where they would send these out um, every year to local businesses um, to just to let them know, like, make sure you license from us if you're going to use this stuff. You know, um, they would just kind of really be beyond that. And you know, like local uh, printing presses for both like clothing and printing presses for like you know images. Like they won't, they won't print stuff bearing like University of Oregon trademarks or images or anything unless like you have a, a clean agreement with them. They're pretty diligent about that because they can they can get in trouble for that stuff. But it's pretty interesting. Uh, a few years ago, um, Okoboji, which I believe is in Iowa, I believe it's in Iowa. Uh, they they made, and you can see it right here, uh, the Okoboji pioneers, right? They used the Bilotti Bold font. They used the same O. Well, the University of Oregon sent them a cease and desist. Now, that's not us being bullies. That's us basically having to you know, protect our trademark. Meaning if we let people use our mark of trade um, in counterfeit goods or appropriate it, you know, it weakens the value and the distinctiveness of our mark, which is something we'll talk about in the, in the coming weeks and, and the importance of having a distinct mark. So when they go after people at Autzen, you know, people who do fan art, like you can't even like, if you're a University of Oregon club, Ultimate Frisbee Club or Rock Climbing Club and you want to use the O on headwear and apparel, you can't do it. You have to do that through official chains and it has to be made by Nike because we're, you know, we'll get, we'll get in trouble for that stuff. Um, so it's more about mitigating damages. Uh, but with a lot of it, it's like you have to police, you know, your, your, your trademark. So Okoboji uh, tri changed their logo. Um, they also put a nice little TM under it, you know, to say they have a common law trademark on that. Um, but it's pretty interesting, all this stuff. You know, the University of Oregon also deals with um, commercial filming on campus. So you as students can film on campus um, with no permission. You don't have to worry about that. But any commercial filming, whether it's commercials, advertisements, a few years ago uh, at the Olympic, Olympic trials, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, who was, who's still going by Bruce at that point, and some of the Jenner boys, um, came here for keeping up with the Kardashians. And so they had to get cleared through the University of Oregon. Um, when there was a show, The Deadliest Catch, which was about crab fishing, I believe one of the, 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 you know, the participants on you know, one of the fleets, one of the you know, employees, uh, was wearing a UO you know, hoodie. And like, they have to clear that. Um, with the university, you know, that's for commercial, commercial purposes, you know, you have to, you have to clear that stuff because it's associating the university's brand with whatever, with whatever you're doing. Um, so our department here, um, will still handle those, those sorts of commercial, uh, filming opportunities on, on campus. Uh, but as students, you're, fr you're free to basically do, do what you want. But if you want to include stuff like Kenny Wheaton's The Catch, you're familiar with that, like the radio call on that, which is a very famous UO uh, football play against UW uh, in the 90s. Um, you know, you can't just use that, you know. Um, you can't just use certain things, you know, and that's something that's just really important, although you're students here, you know. So things to think about, things to chew on. But intellectual property rights at the university and at all universities is vital. Um, universities benefit from uh, science departments. so. At most, uh, most campuses, you know, uh, what happens is faculty and students who go into like, let's say a biochem or chemistry program or whatever, or engineering or something like that, um, they sign an agreement that basically says that anything that they invent under their employment or tenure at the university, um, even on their own time, um, that's patentable, that they can get a patent on, will become the assigned to the University of Oregon and they will receive royalties. So like say I, I'm a you know a biochem faculty and I and I invent a patentable uh, cure for coronavirus. Lucky me, right? Well, 
The thing is, is I would file for the patent as inventor, but I would have to, as per my contract, assign the patent to the University of Oregon, who would then become the owner, who would then pay me a royalty rate based upon the money they, they generate from that. And that's how it works at almost all uh, universities. But it also includes stuff you invent on your own time or make in your own time. Many universities have the same um, sort of policies for creatives, like filmmakers. And the idea is if you use a film department's cameras and equipment and editing space, et cetera, et cetera, you, you're using their property to create stuff. So for instance, New York, uh, NYU, um, you know, Spike Lee doesn't own any of his college films. They're all in a, you know, copyrighted by uh, NYU. And it's like that at USC and UCLA. Um, not like that in our department because I push back against that, that stuff. Um, but like most, most of the time, you know, in any science, you know, you're going to be giving up your, your patentable ideas to the university, and that's a fairly standard thing. I mean, it's even worse at other companies. You go and work for Nike, and they claim that um, they'll make you sign agreements that, you know, say you will not compete five, up to five years after employment, meaning if you leave Nike, you can't go work at Adidas or another shoe company for five years. They'll also have things in their employment contracts where anything you make that is patentable, copyrightable, um, during your tenure of employment, even if you do it at home, becomes a property of Nike, or up to five to seven years after employment becomes their property. It all depends on the agreement you sign. That, again, that's fairly standard in some degree at companies like Intel and other, other places where they own stuff you invent um, at home during your employment there. So, um, you know, again, Nothing, nothing, nothing that off, but I mean, you know, intellectual properties are big to the university. There's millions of dollars generated off just trademarks alone, the sale of t-shirts uh, and other goods. And a lot of that has to do with morale. A lot of that has to do with uh, s like sports teams, the success of sports teams and overall morale and love for the university um, that kind of comes from a lot of that stuff. You'd be surprised at how much that does to actually sell stuff. Um, that benefits the university. They get that 12% for everything. So having that's important. I only say that from coming from some universities where I went where we had really shitty uh, uh, sports teams and, you know, students weren't really proud to like rock Central Connecticut State University football shirts or whatever, you know, and like just because we sucked, you know, and they still suck. Um, you know, but when you have good teams, good basketball teams, you know, the big TV sports specifically, uh, you tend you tend to really sell stuff, and you gotta think too. Like when y university teams are really good and they're on national television, I mean that's a two and a half, three hour advertisement for that university, showing those logos over and over again. I mean it helps really drive up enrollment. It helps to really sell the university and brand and brand the university. So it's it's ultimately really vital in a lot of ways. And there's tons of money made off of those contracts for broadcasting rights for those sports, which hopefully we can have sports again sometime soon. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's a little bit on the duck intellectual property rights at the University of Oregon. The stuff won't be on the exam. This exam will be on the second exam. So, you know, it's just some food for thought, just some stuff for you to chop up and enjoy and think about, because maybe you don't think about where your money's going when you go to the the bookstore, but you're ultimately, you know, when you go to the bookstore and you buy some UO gear, you're, you're putting money back in, into the pockets, just that, that 12% um, on each dollar. So uh, I'm going to get back to uh, scraping up these, uh, these frames and get these old cones cleaned out. Hopefully things go well for me. I can catch a, a, a colony, you know, get a swarm off a tree here or something. I'm kind of hoping I'll find something or just set these up and the bees will they'll they'll find it so we'll see what we'll see what happens uh hope you have a you know a great week good luck on the test y'all can do it i know y'all can do it i feel real confident in y'all although you know got that we got that social distance from from the camera and in general but uh yeah take care of yourselves and uh we will check you uh in week five halfway through we're getting there all right peace